Hmm, hello, I'm Stefan Perez, Environmental Engineer at New Mexico State University. And today we're going to be going over the FormLab Form 2 printer. We'll be covering a variety of different topics, such as how to use the FormLab software on the computer, how to operate your actual printer, as well as getting into how to clean your part, and maybe even dive into how to maintain the printer itself. So follow along with me today as we cover these topics, and hopefully you learn something. So this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use the FormLab software. The software is crucial to operating your FormLab printer. In the case of the printer that I'm using, it's the FormLab 2. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So to download the software, you're going to go ahead and go to the FormLab website and click over on the software tab and under that you'll see Preform. Once you select Preform, it's either download for the Mac or for Windows. And once you have that downloaded, you'll have your setup file. So in this case, Preform Setup 3.2.2. And we can go ahead and run that. So from there, it's just a simple software installation. Agree to a couple of things, tell it where you want it, and it'll begin the install. So this one's giving me an error because I've already installed it once. So I'm gonna go ahead and abort. Once it's installed, you can open it and this is what you'll see. So sometimes it'll take you through a setup. You can either choose to go through that or you can just skip it. In this case, I went ahead and skipped it, so we just opened up. Now, I've attached my printer using the USB cable and it's showing up right here. So what we could do is we could select different printers. So if you have multiple printers, you can have them all attached and pick and choose which one you want to use. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come over to this virtual printer. So this is perfect for just kind of running through, you know, doing a dry run, just showing you all the different features in here and kind of how to use this program. So whenever you pick your printer, it'll prompt you to also select your material. So what we're actually going to be using is currently what's set up here. So we're going to be using a gray resin and it's going to be version V4 FLGPGR04. This is a number that you can find on top of your cartridge. So on the resin cartridge itself, it'll tell you gray and then have this number. So I want this print to be as fast as possible. So my layer thickness is going to be 160. If I wanted to have the highest resolution possible, I'd bring it over here to 25. So we're going to go ahead and apply those changes. And right now, currently what we're looking at is our build area. So as long as our part fits in this square here and in this height, we should be able to print it. So we'll go ahead and bring in something simple and you can just drag and drop it right into the part. So in this case, I'm going to make a little coaster. And we can see that when it brought it in, it brought it in just directly on this build platform. So over here, we can see some yellow warnings that popped up. One is printability warning. Models directly on the build platform. Problem with the model being directly on the build platform and not, not elevated is all of this surface area on the back side of this print is going to be making contact with this area. Now what that's going to cause is the part to basically stick to it. Now every part sticks to this, however, with the way that this edge is formed, it's just a straight 90 degree to my part. So if I'm trying to get something under there to scrape it off to remove it, I'm going to have a really hard time. So ideally, I'm going to want this part to spend it off of my print deck. So what I can do here is come over to orientation. Now, whenever we open up our orientation tab, right here on the top, it says auto orient all. I typically use this for everything just because I trust the computer program. I trust that it's going to form it to the best way possible. So I'm going to hit auto orient and it's going to place the part up on its side. So now some other problems that I have here 
it's telling me I have unsupported minima detected. So there's certain regions on here that aren't supported. So these red areas don't have any support to them. So those are areas that I'm concerned with and I need to make sure that I support. Now I can change the orientation of this part and it'll change how well those are supported. So now I just took my part and I just canted it just a little bit to the side and it automatically got rid of the unsupported areas due to the orientation of it. So play around with the part a little bit and make sure to use your you know, different warning prompts over here to kind of see you know, where, where a good spot is for it. So now that we have our part oriented, we're going to go ahead and add our supports to it. So since our part's placed on its side this way, the only contact that it's going to have with the print area is this little point right down here. This isn't really enough to support all of this as it's printing. Because remember, this is going to start printing layer by layer, and it's going to start right here, and then keep on moving this direction. So by the time it gets to this area here, like I said, there's not going to be much holding on here, so we're probably going to end up with a bad print. So we'll come over and we'll add supports. Again, I'm just going to hit auto generate. So it's going to automatically create different supports and put them where they need to be. And this is all based on what we saw earlier, whether you know parts are supported or they're not supported. So once the supports have been created, we can edit them as well. So looking at this, it created supports inside of here. So see all of this gray area, these little gray lines, those are all the different supports that it created. So now we can take those and we can actually edit them and get rid of them if we want. So if we come over here to edit supports, edit, we'll notice that there's these little white dots. Now these dots are where we can add and get rid of supports. To get rid of them, all we have to do is just take our little cursor that has a dot attached to it and put it directly over the top and click. As soon as we do that, it gets rid of the support. And like I said, we can also add support. So if we wanted to support here, 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 we can freely add them. I went ahead and discarded my changes there. Everything's now supported. And at this point, we're ready to print. So over here, we have our status. So these are the different details of the print itself. So here, we have our print time, which in this case is four hours. How many layers it's going to be composed of, which is 480. And the volume of our actual fluid that we're going to be using, our resin. So in the case of this machine, since we're using the Form 2, it keeps track of all the fluid that goes through it, which is really nice. The only time you have to really pay attention to that is if you've recycled one of the containers and filled it with resin, then it's going to show up as being an empty container, so you need to keep up with how much you put in there and how much is coming out. With the older printers, I'm not exactly sure how they work. I believe you have to manually add the resin to the tank as it prints. So this is also an important thing to know, so that way you're, you know, keeping tabs on how much resin you have. Uh, from here, we can take our part and go ahead and tell it to go and print. So we'll come over here to the print. And here we have select printer. So this is the actual printer that we have hooked up to the computer. Again, this is hooked up via USB. And we'll go ahead and select it. This gives you the status on the printer itself. Status currently is it's printing. Uh, there's a part that I created earlier that I'm gonna run through with the rest of the tutorial on. And this also shows us what our level is in the cartridge as well as the tank. So currently, tank is full, everything's good and blue. The cartridge is empty on the other hand. Like I said earlier, 
this cartridge has been recycled, so I filled it with resin from another cartridge. And it should have plenty to do with the print that I need, so I'm going to go ahead and ignore that. So we'll hit select. Here you can change your job name, add an account, you know, keep track of everything, you know, if you're charging people or however you want to do it. And we can go ahead and upload the job. So from here it's going to generate the print file and send it over to the 3D printer itself. And we have our job uploaded. So that's the easiest way to go about it. Um, files that you bring in, of course, are going to be STL files. Uh, I don't think I covered that earlier. So all of the files that I have here are STL files that we basically converted over from SOLIDWORKS files. So in our case, we're drawing up whatever we want in SOLIDWORKS and then exporting it as an STL. And that's what you see here. on how to use the Form Lab Form 2 printer. This printer is a stereolithography printer, which means that it uses a resin that gets hardened by a laser to create our 3D print. So to begin with, I'm just going to check and make sure that everything's open, everything works, make sure my print build platform is clear. And then now I'm going to go over here and pick my resin tank. So I've been using two different types. I've been using a flexible resin as well as a gray resin that's rigid. And for this particular print, I'm going to go ahead and use the gray resin. Now this part right here is what they call the tank. The tank holds all of the resin in it that gets used for the printing process and it's fed to it from this printer cartridge. Now each tank and cartridge matches together. So as soon as you plug this into the machine, there's a small little barcode or chip on the side that it reads and it tells it, okay, this is the gray tank, this is the gray printer cartridge. So that way you can't really mix them up. It's important not to touch the bottom of this. So on the bottom side, in this area here, this is where all the laser light shines through, so it needs to be clear. If it's not clear, then it'll prematurely harden the resin, causing a print failure. The tank just slides in, and this is the wiper. The wiper moves side to side and clears the print area. This also fits down in this little notch right here. and get slid forward into position. Now once it's closed, we can grab our cartridge. Again, we're going with the gray one. We want to open up the vent to allow the resin to flow through freely. Make sure that the opening here is clear. We'll go ahead and insert our tank. Now if we look here at our status bar, our, computer, our printer is telling us we're ready to print. Alright, so now once our part has been sent over to the printer, we'll be able to see it right here and make sure that we're on the correct print job. So right now, we're being told it's ready to print. So this is all set up and ready to go. So what we'll go ahead and do is select print now. It's going to tell you to open the cartridge vent, which we already did, which is this up here on top. It's going to tell us to make sure to check the build platform. We want to make sure that it's clear, which we did earlier, which is this section right here. And now we're ready to begin. So the machine's going to home itself make sure that everything's working correctly. It's also going to start heating our resin 
So in this case, it's going to start whenever it gets to 31 degrees Celsius as per that type of resin. Currently we're at 28.5 degrees Celsius, so take a few minutes to heat up. Once this is heated up, it'll begin printing. All right, so now after some time, our print's finished. So if we look here, it's gonna tell us, of course, our print's been completed. So we'll go ahead and hit okay. Now we're gonna open up our printer, we'll remove our build platform, lifting up on that lever, sliding it out, rotating it, and there's our print. Now our print is still attached to the build platform, so at this point, we need to remove it. So the easiest way to do this is to hold it right next to our alcohol bath. What this is gonna do is this will end up rinsing the part. So as we can see, there's still some resin just kind of left on the part itself. It's still a little sticky and tacky. So what'll happen is as soon as we put this in here, it'll drop down, it'll circulate alcohol around it, which is about a 90% isopropyl alcohol mix, and that'll clean off any of the resin that's not been hardened yet. So we're going to take our little spatula here and we're just going to kind of scoop up underneath it just like so. When we're done, we'll place our build platform right back in the printer and we'll close our lid. From there, come down to our settings and I have this set for 20 minutes. So we'll go ahead and start. Part's going to be lowered down into the alcohol. and a pump will begin circulating. And again, this process will take 20 minutes. So while we're waiting on that, we'll go over just a couple of, you know, housekeeping tips. So on your printer, it's important to keep the lid down when it's not in operation, especially if you have one of the tanks still in it. The way that this resin works is it's hardened by UV light. So if this is open, it's being exposed to any UV light that might be coming in from outside, the interior lights, wherever. So eventually this resin will go bad and it'll harden inside the tank. So by keeping the lid closed, it prevents that from happening. It's also a good idea to close the lid on the, the printer cartridge itself, just because you don't want any dust coming in there. One of the downsides to this type of 3D printer is it really needs a clean environment. It's one of the reasons why it's here in my office and not down in my lab. Being as dust free as possible is crucial to maintaining your actual printer. So moving on to the actual alcohol bath itself, there's a gauge in there that actually tells you what percentage of alcohol you still have left. So that's something that you calibrate whenever you first fill it up. It's important to use an isopropyl alcohol mix that's greater than 90%. Reason for that is, as you saw, the sticky outer coating that ends up on these parts when they come out of the printer ends up diluting inside of that uh, alcohol. And as you can see here, this is a sample that I pulled out. It's not clear anymore. It's got the actual resin in it still. So what happens over time is the percentage of alcohol degrades. So you want to make sure that you watch that gauge and make sure that you still have a high enough concentration of alcohol. If it starts dripping below that, problems you'll encounter are, you know, parts that aren't completely cured. They'll still have just a little bit of tackiness to them. So another thing to worry about are the actual resin tanks themselves. So the way that I store them is back in the box. So make sure that you keep your box as well as your lid. So again, these harden with UV light. So what I'll do is I'll take my tank, put it in my box, put the lid over the top, and close the box. This way keeps the tank out of the light, keeps my resin fresh, and I can continue to reuse it. Alright, so once the part's done in the alcohol bath, all of the ex excess resin has been cleaned off. So now we'll take it and we'll put it in the curing machine. So what this does is it rotates around in a circle, shines UV light on it, 
and blows hot air through it. So we'll go ahead and adjust our settings on this. We're going to go ahead and run this for about 60 minutes. And we'll go at 60 degrees Celsius. There's no real rhyme or reason to that. That's what this thing defaulted at. And it works pretty well. So now the machine's going to heat up to 60 degrees Celsius. So we're currently at 22, which is about our room temperature here. And we'll get up to 66. And then once that happens, our part will be mostly finished. We'll just have to remove some of the supports on it and show you how that is in about an hour. So once part's done curing in the oven, you remove it. And then we just have to remove the supports. So the supports have tinier connections where they connect to the parts. So we can come in with these clippers. And just remove them like so. And now you can see where the little connections were made. With that, we can come in later with some sandpaper or you know, even a file or something. And we can get those down to where they're really flat, to where you don't even notice them anymore. At that point, this resin can take paint, and that's about the end of it. So, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you find it informative. And, yeah, thank you again. So hopefully you found this video informative, and if you have any questions, just go and write them down in the comments. I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can, as accurately as I can, and thank you again.